Teresa Floor ES version 12 we released has a new type of floor system called user defined. When you start a model, you have the option to start that model here, let's see, with a different type of floor. So if we go to concrete, you'll see that you have a design strip method or a user defined method. The user defined method allows you to lay out a entire floor using a grid for your slab. So for example, we just choose from a for certain set of reinforcement for the top and the bottom and let the program check it versus having the program design it. So when the program uses design strips, that's more method is of the ACI method, design strip method for mid column strip methods and middle strips to design that reinforcement. In this model here, you can also see I've already started this model and I have that floor type can be altered between design strips and user defined in here in this floor spreadsheet. So when you set it to user defined, you can put in a bottom reinforcement and you give it a design rule there. You can say if it's continuous for the top as well as the bottom. So the bottom is always considered continuous. The top reinforcement, that one can be either continuous or it can be in sections over columns and walls. So if we go over to our new slab design rule spreadsheet, it looks a little different. First thing you have to define if you're saying a design strip or a user defined. So the one we're working on is the user defined and we would skip over the slab design strips and go straight to the user defined bottom reinforcement. So here this is where you tell the program I want a number 8 bar. I want to use it consistently in both directions at 12 inches spacing. Uh, we also want to go to the top reinforcement and that top reinforcement you can lay out here as a top bar in a certain amount of spacing. First thing we'll do is we'll start by adding that and we can maybe, if we'll come back later and if we want to do some more reinforcement rules. Uh, so this this top reinforcement, that's going to be laid out over the columns and the walls. And the way we can see that here is under our reinforcement top rebar, we see a mesh of over the top uh, reinforcement over these columns and over these walls. These are defined inside of the column spreadsheet user defined tab. So right now we're going over every single column, although you can adjust these numbers, you can move them eccentrically, uh, but these are going to be 120 inches in each direction over each column. And if we look at the walls panel spreadsheet, we see the same type of thing. We have a 30 inch offset off that wall. So we're now seeing that that is going to be described for the mesh of plate of those plates there are going to have top reinforcement in just those plates. We can make that larger if we need to. Excuse me, I'm going to go back to my wall panels and I can see, for example, I can make this to be 50 inches and I'll see here that that got a little bit larger for this one right here. So now we can check this model using this reinforcement. So we may solve the model and it's now instead of going ahead and drawing design strips and all that information, it's just going to check the reinforcement. With the solution coming up here, I can say OK. And now I'm looking at this model and trying to see whether it worked. So the program has placed that reinforcement in there for the top. We can see the bottom reinforcement. We can see all of the reinforcement on there. And then you have the option here, sorry, I turned it on too early here, top unity check right here. So this icon here turns on this top unity check and we get to see here this information on the right tells us that anything in red is failing. So anything under red here under these colors is now passing. So we can see a lot of red on our model and that's because we have some positive moment in these areas. So we haven't placed any reinforcement over those top positive areas there. So what we would need to do is deal with that by adding more reinforcement. Um, let's see, we can make bigger cages to try to cover that. So we have some options on how to do that. First thing we do, we could say is we have a option to add more reinforcement. We could use the same design rules or we could use different design rules. Uh, let's go ahead and use the same design rule, uniform, and we can draw a box or a polygon over different areas areas. And we'll say apply and we'll just draw kind of a box in a couple different areas so we see that we put some reinforcement in these areas and see what happens. We'll then need to rerun the solution and the program will now check these as we using this reinforcement in these areas to see if it works. So now we have solution and I see that this is now passing in this area. Uh, we can double check our bottom reinforcement. Let's go ahead and just check that. That worked out just fine. So really most times you're focusing on the top reinforcement. 
We can find different pieces of information about why that would have passed or failed by using our detail report option. So we click on the detail report and you can click on any plate. And what this is showing here is each plate is being checked. So if we turn the plate mesh on, just sort of helps you see that. Uh, so we, we see here some red plates that are failing and we can click on any of these red plates to find out what's going on in there. In this one here, we see that we have our over code check and that's because we put zero top reinforcement in this area and we have a little bit of positive top, top bending here. Uh, the bottom reinforcement is covering us just fine, so we are okay there. Uh, we can click in some of the ones where we're passing and you'll see that the hair is top reinforcement when we get close to a column and that it works just fine for that one, but when we move outside of those, those regions there, we're seeing still positive bending, but we have nothing to resist it. So a way to get past, we could start drawing regions all over, but that seems like it might be difficult in this lab. Uh, so what we could do is we could go ahead and switch this to be under our floor spreadsheet, continuous for the total top bar. So instead of just doing patches of top reinforcement, we are now going to say place the entire top reinforcement everywhere. And then you would rerun the solution and see that we're going to distribute that top reinforcement everywhere. We can now get solution and we see that we're passing in a lot of places now. So now we're just a little bit highlighted areas that we have problems with it. But otherwise we are now fully seeing our entire slab with our top reinforcement, our bottom reinforcement, everything is all in continuous and we see that it's now being designed.